Hello, this is Matthew Chan, and I'm with uh, attorney Oscar Michelin from New York, and we're here in Atlanta to produce this video, especially for you guys to learn from. And uh, I'm really excited about this video because we're going to talk about the letter program in a way we have never discussed before. Oscar, thanks for coming down. Oh, it's a me pleasure. Video. Good to see you. Well, Oscar, I know this is a, a subject that you're just so excited about, and I'm really excited about it too because this was really our first official project where we brainstormed, we put a solution together, uh, a way to help far more people. You know, yeah. it's really very, uh, uh, not it's non-traditional in many ways. So, Oscar, why don't you just kind of refresh our audience how this all kind of came about? Well. Uh, actually, it started with you, okay. in that uh, you were a recipient of one of these Getty Demand letters. Absolutely. And you took it upon yourself to respond to their letter. Right, the first go round. Right. And you were, I would imagine, uh, a little outraged at what they were doing, what they were demanding. Yeah, I didn't like their response to my letter either. And you put a <clears> website. <throat> I sure did. That was kind of a, um, I don't know what they call it, but really a kind of a free speech issue about how you felt about the program and to let people know what was happening out there. You did a great service by putting the information out there. There was a copy of the letter, I believe. Yes. There's a copy of your response. So you were just trying to tell people, this is what's happening to me. Be careful. It might happen to you. Exactly. And. <clears throat> You saw, I think, a response that I put on AVO. I did. Which is a lawyer site, lawyer rating site. Yes. That allows lawyers, uh, too, that allows uh, folks to put up questions to lawyers, to have lawyers answer the questions. They answered a question about the Getty program. Yes. I <clears throat> wasn't aware of it at that time. And I guess in the manner that I answered it, which I was a little bit shocked at the program and the fact that there were a lot of things people could say in response to the program mm -hmm. that you then contacted me, right? Well, exactly. I mean, there was, I mean, I had realized, I discovered that I was one of maybe hundreds of people and uh, out there. And I knew there was complaints. I did a lot of research. But a lot of it, as you know, Oscar, when you go check, there's a lot of ranting and raving. And I wanted to put some semblance of order and rational discussion. Right. I mean, yes, without a doubt, I was upset, but I knew the way to do that wasn't ranting and raving and name calling. I had to get the facts. I had to know where I had to stand. And so, just you know, for the audience's benefit, I mean, obviously, um, you stepped in right around the time that I had my second response, and it was in fact Getty's suggestion that I go contact an experienced. Uh, attorney that was knowledgeable in copyrights and intellectual property. I and mean, I was like, you know what? I already beat you to it. I didn't need <laughs> that letter. And I had the good fortune of writing to you and you responded and I felt so good about that. Right. Well, yeah, I, we, my firm does, among other types of litigation, right. we do IP, intellectual property, which includes copyrights and trademarks. Mm -hmm. Patent law, which we don't do, is kind of the third field that's covered under this umbrella of intellectual property. It's copyright, trademark, patent, generally, when you talk about IP. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm glad they did that, obviously, because we started a good friendship out of it and, and this project to help folks. But um, I immediately saw some major, major issues with their approach and that they're... Yeah, you saw my letter and you saw my response, so you got educated quite quickly, actually. Yeah, I said, well, this is, this is crazy. Right. Um, and we, I began doing some of my own little research into the issue myself to try mm -hmm. to familiarize myself with what Getty was doing. Right. Um, I had already, obviously, was aware of the law in the field, but digital imagery had not really generated a lot of legal decisions Mm -hmm. that you could look up. There's tons of decisions on authorship books and co-authorships of songs, for example. Mm -hmm. There's always been tremendous amounts of litigation over a lot of precedent. Song ownership. Right, so you can look up and un yeah. understand established rights 
and what people are entitled to as damages and what people are not entitled to as damages. So right from the beginning, what I saw was that Getty probably had a very strong legal position on infringement, where the people were infringing on their rights. Mm -hmm. But it seemed they were way overstating their position on what the pro appropriate damages were for that infringement. And that's the, those are the two parts of any lawsuit, is one, do you have a claim under the law? And if you do, what is that claim worth? Well, and I how will, much should yeah. you be awarded? I will tell you, Oscar, uh, before I had spoken to you, uh, you know, obviously I'm a publisher, you know, and I know a little bit about copyrights, what you can and cannot do, but, you know, they're more in broad strokes. And so when you broke that up for me, it just really, it was like a light bulb. I mean, it's, you know, we understood their position, but what they were asking for was a bit, as I called it, extortionistic. Right. I mean, it wasn't rational. Right. And, and so you were able to make that distinction from a legal sense, and I think that was a, a very powerful distinction. Right. It's, it, I, I consider it a legal, legal yes. form of extortion by asking for damages probably more, significantly more, than you would ever get in a, in a court of law. And I think that's where I had my main difference. I continue to have my main difference right. with Getty and their, and their um, counsel in that there's no need to go to this, to this level. It's over the top. It's too much. It frightens people. Uh, you're not likely to get it in a court of law. And you just shouldn't respond this way to what is usually a very minimal infringement. It's like killing a fly with a machine gun. Most of these people, I'm not going to say most, everyone I've ever come across are not in the business of reselling Getty's images. Right. Okay, they're not, they're not taking a Getty image and then making that Getty image available to somebody else for free or for, for a price. They're using a thumbnail to decorate a website. The other thing is the vast majority of people have no idea that that is a Getty image. And there's a number of reasons why they don't have an idea. Normally, they use a website developer. Or, yes, or a template. That is so common. It's unbelievable. Right. It's usually a third party. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately. It's, right. It's, many of them, for example, where there's a lot of real estate companies, are sent disks from their parent companies. And they say, use these discs, use these images, excuse me, use this content, right. words and images, to develop your websites because we want a consistency and all right. of this. Lo and behold, it gets those, everybody in trouble. Those gets everybody in trouble. It's crazy, isn't it? So it's, it puts a lot of pressure on folks who were innocent under the law, did not know they were infringing on somebody's copyright. Unfortunately, unfortunately, and people do need to understand this, Innocence is not a defense to the first part of the claim. Yes, you've made that abundantly clear so, many times. You're watching this, so right. I didn't know it was copyrighted, or I didn't know somebody else developed it. Is not a defense. Okay, innocence can be can be a defense to the second part. What is the case, quote unquote, worth? And if you look at other copyright litigation not involving digital imagery, you see that courts, both judges and juries, take into account the innocence of the person in figuring out how much they should compensate the other side for the infringing behavior. Well, I tend to think there, I have to believe there's a little bit of common sense of the courts. You know, as you have said many times, the legal system is, certainly isn't perfect. And in my particular case, I was perfectly prepared to argue my case, even though I was a lawyer. I mean, I had to believe common sense had to prevail, and I had enough supporting evidence to know that this was not even close to being intentional. I mean, I could have produced a whole bunch of documents where I got it from, and how small, and all of that. I was perfectly prepared for it. Right. Well, and, one, yeah, exactly. And, and one of the things that's been most troubling about the Getty program to me is that 
they're, they're kind of shifting, if you will, their position. I mean, we get a little bit of ahead of ourselves, but what, what ended up happening right. after we had these discussions is we started to say, we got to get more information out there. And you expanded your, your website to include a little summary from me about the law. Yes, I certainly did. We you put gave up a lot of feedback. We put up a discussion forum. Absolutely. Which continues to be uh, vital and very active. 